Hello, we are a team number 1009 of undergraduate students from St. Petersburg Electrotechnical University, Russia. My name is Zachary Samoilov. My name is Dmitry Kotov. My name is Daniel Kirilcev. Our coach is Dmitry Pavlov. As we introduced ourselves, let's get started. This video shows a moment at the finish line of a bicycle race. Demi Wallering, the sprinter in purple, was leading the race, but began raising her hand in celebration too early. At this time, Ruth Winder, the sprinter in white, chose to make a common in bicycle races finishing move, a back throw. Because the time gap between them was incredibly small, the race officials had to review the official line records. Unexpectedly, records showed Winder's victory, as the front wheel of her bicycle was the first to cross the finish line. We were asked to examine the phenomena of the bike throw and to answer the following questions. When should a rider stop pedaling and shift their weight backwards to the trust the bike forward? What is the best position for the cyclist? What is the time interval that a professional cyclist must exploit for this move to be effective? And what is the maximum amount uh, of time that can be made up? We also should keep in mind that professional cyclists are moving at the speed where friction can be considerable. To simplify our model and computations, we use these assumptions. The first one is that the cyclist has a point mass and it's placed on the seat. Then we assume that the finish line is on a flat horizontal surface to avoid calculating additional forces. Also, we will not take into account the friction between the parts of the bicycle and the efficiency of its drivetrain for the same reason as the previous one. The weather is calm, it means there is no wind whatsoever and the air density is average. To decrease complexity of the model, we think that the bicycle and the cyclist only move in one dimension and do not tilt. And the last one. Back throw timing is negligibly small, so we assume that the move is instantaneous. This was made to use the law of conservation of momentum. There are variables and constants used in our computations. G is the gravitational constant, MC stands for the mass of cyclist, MB stands for the mass of bike. Then we use big M to define mass of the bike, uh, bicycle cyclist system, and the air density is rho. CD is the drag coefficient, A is the cross sectional area, CAA stands for the rolling resistance coefficient, L stands for the distance of the cyclist has moved backward, and V is the velocity of the system. We make use of Newton's second law to describe the motion of a bicycle. dp over dt equals fc minus fd minus frr, where fc is the force applied by the cyclist, fd is the drag force and frr is the rolling resistance force. During bicycle races, aerodynamic resistance accounts for over 90% of resistance a cyclist encounters on a flat surface. Drag force increases with the square of the relative wind speed. Drag force also increases with the cross-sectional area. This leads us to the conclusion that the best position should have a smaller cross-sectional area. Figure A represents the position with the hands on the handlebars, figure B represents the position with the hands on the traps, and figure C represents the position for the bike throw. Research by Timothy Crouch's team shows that drop-handed positions provide a smaller cross-sectional area and are preferred over the other positions. We will use marked measurements later in the model. Another force a cyclist faces is rolling resistance. It is proportional to the normal force, where CRR is the rolling resistance coefficient which depends on the type of tires used and the surface on which the bike is being ridden. We now can derive the equation of motion. Using MATLAB, we get graphs for velocity. The first graph shows a scenario with no force of the rider at all, so you can see decreasing in velocity over time. 
The second one depicts the rider's force that is equal to the resistances. This determines a constant speed. The last one shows a scenario with the rider's force higher than resistances. For some time velocity gets accelerated, but at some point resistances catch up with this force and velocity becomes constant. We assume that time of the bike throw is negligible. Then according to the impulse momentum theorem, we can say that the impulse is conserved. Thus you can imagine that a bicycle moves at a constant speed for some time. Then, for simplicity, let's take a frame of reference uh, that will move at this speed. From the law of conservation of momentum, we obtain the following equations, where big V is the velocity of the bicycle gets added after the throw, and small v is uh, the velocity of the cyclist moving backwards. Then x distance traveling by bicycle during bike throw. Here's the final plot. We assume that for the first second both cyclists are moving at a constant speed of 12 meters per second. Just before the finish line, represented on the graph as a black horizontal line, the blue one throws his bicycle forward and stays in the position of throw without applying any force. The green, on the other hand, continues to move at a constant speed. We can see that the blue cyclist gets ahead and finishes the race approximately at the time t1. The green cyclist finishes the race at the time t2 and after another second he overtakes the blue cyclist at the time t3. We can now answer the given questions. When should the rider stop pedaling and shift their weight backwards to thrust the bike forward? We assume that in reality the gain distance decreases with decrease of the execution speed. Still, we suggest to start the bike throw according to the final bike throw equation only when approaching finish line. What is the best position for the cyclist? The best position is the one that creates a smaller cross-sectional area for the air to affect. Preferably, this body position should be used only when full control is not required. What is the time interval that a professional cyclist must exploit for this move to be effective? We suggest doing the bike throw as fast as possible to increase the gain distance. What is the maximum amount of time that can be made up? In our scenario, maximum amount of time that can be made up is approximately 1.5 hundredths of a second. All limitations of the proposed model are based on our assumptions. The first one is the instantaneousness of a bike throw. This assumption was made by us due to a lack of information, so a series of experiments need to be conducted to determine the time spent on this move more accurately. The second one is the weather. If the weather deviations are taken into account, at least at the level of wind, then this will allow our model to give more realistic results. And the last one is the tilt of a bicycle. Balance plays a big role in cycling and must be considered to get better predictions.